It's my birthday. I'm Julia, and I want to share 10 things I'm grateful for since I'm turning 10. So I am excited to share those with you. We'll go over our 10 elements of gratitude and what you can do with your own kids. Mama says namaste. Mama says namaste. Making a family can be easy and fun. Oh, yeah, but raising a family can be a whole different story. From spouses to kids to the crazy daily grind, life often directs us away from connection and more into reactive chaos. If you're tired of that cycle and are seeking something beyond the picket fence blues, this is the show for you. I'm Ashley. And I'm Nathan. And we're here to take you from chaos to clarity by bringing awareness and intention into your home, not waiting for one day, and highlighting how the, the uniqueness in each of us strengthens all of us. Take a deep breath in and let's start a brand new day. With Mama Says Namaste. So this week is Juliet's 10th birthday. And we were talking about this and how monumental this is. Nathan, you mentioned that, I mean, this is her new season for the rest of her life, most likely. Yeah, I mean, she'll... Yeah, like... Go ahead, sorry. Well, you'll stay in the double digits until you hit 100, so... Yeah, I was... Yeah, um, I'm... Like, this is the only time that I'm going to gain a digit unless I make it to 100, so... That's kind of cool. Wish you will. Uh, Yeah, I hope I will. (laughs) I don't know. Whatever. So we were trying to think up what could we do that could be around that number 10... And Jules decided she wanted to, wanted to share 10 things she's grateful for. So we wanted to go through our list of 10 things she's grateful for from a 10-year-old's perspective based on the life that we've lived. So, Juliet, number one, what is something you are grateful for? I am grateful for my mouth and my nose. And that's kind of a weird one to be grateful for, and I know that. Um, but Good thing you come from a weird family. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think it's probably meaning we don't really think much about our mouth and our nose, though they do almost everything to keep us alive. And they, my mouth communicates to other people if I'm hungry, if I'm thirsty, and what I need. If a baby didn't cry, then how could he say he needed milk? So mm-hmm. your mouth is really important for communicating to other people. And then my nose. My nose does the most of my breathing, and we need to breathe to stay alive. But I think I kind of chose these two strange, uh, grateful questions because I just thought that they weren't usually spoken as grateful things. You don't really think about them or talk about them as much. And it's been really fun to just, like, dive into what I'm grateful for. And this was the first one that popped into my mind. And I love it because I think that you're right. A lot of people do take this for granted. And I know that, you know, even since COVID, you know, with some of the symptoms being losing your sense of smell and your sense of taste, it's made us very aware and cognizant of how grateful we are for having the both. I mean, for, for the fact that, you know, we all have had COVID in our ho- household and everybody has their sense of taste and yeah, smell. that was amazing. And that, we didn't lose our taste or our smell because that would have been so, so hard. Right. So it, it's been, it's, it's really been evident to all of us how grateful we are for it. So I love that that was the first thing that you said you were grateful for. We take these things for granted, yet they're very valuable for who we are and for how we function in life, aren't they? Well, I, yes. I remember being at the bank and our CEO came in and just reminded us how valuable it is that we can, we're able to get up this morning on our own. You know, get into the car, get ourselves dressed and ready, and we forget those basics, and we often take them for granted. So I'm glad that you are, uh, that's the first thing on your list is the basics that you appreciate, Jules. Very well said. (laughs) Okay, so moving on, number two, what is the second thing you're most grateful for? Food. And I know that this is another one that we kind of take for granted, and I know that some people don't, and they thank and be grateful for them before they eat. Um, But in our family, we don't always do that. So it's been really 
impactful for me to understand that sometimes we take for granted that and we think, well... Like the food is just there. It yeah. just it just arrives. When some the- people don't have food and that and we do, we take it for granted. We just kind of ignore it, I guess. Well, and we and we get pretty spoiled by daddy's amazing cooking, don't we? <laughs> yes. There have been times in our travels where we haven't had as quite as fancy of feasts and we've recognized in our travels going through areas that are that are known as food deserts where it's really a struggle to find any good food. And um, some of it, you know, we have very fancy taste buds, according to, uh, or, you know, living off of daddy's yummy food. <laughs> but but we've, we've noticed even places where um, it's a struggle to get healthy food. Especially in a, being vegetarian. I mean, it's like more expensive to buy broccoli than it is to buy bologna so (laughs) right and sometimes it's not in good shape and so we recognize how how important it is and how valuable it is for good healthy food and we are grateful for Mm -hmm. the good food that we have and the creative creative ways that daddy comes up with fancy feasts even if it's something as simple (laughs) as beans and rice it's so good isn't it so amazing well i'm grateful for all the steps it takes to bring that food to our door you know, yes. all the people that grow it, the earth, the people that harvest it and bring it to the grocery store. There's so many pieces to the puzzle that just get the food on our plate. It's something that is easy to take for granted. Yeah. Totally. All right. And the third on our list is pets. So I was looking around at our house when I was writing these down, and I saw all of our animals that have really helped us in this house and who we are. And I know that I don't think I'd be be the same without all of our pets because that's opened my eyes and it's also made me more aware. And I think it's made me more patient with creatures. So it's been really nice to have some um, pets in our home. And it's also really nice just to care about them and care about something. And I think that's a little bit training for motherhood a little bit. So I really enjoy having pets. And I think about 89% of the time I will have a dog. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to know. I'm glad (laughs) you appreciate all this menagerie that we drag around with us. (laughs) Of course. It does, it does help to have a different perspective when you see how animals respond to things and it brings, it does heighten heighten awareness for how we interact when we see animal interactions around. So yeah, I think to your point, it does help us to be more aware just by caring for and loving the different animals that we've come across. Not just not just the pets we, we own and pay for and take to the vet, but the, the many... Many menagerie. <laughs> yeah, the many, I guess, uh, in quotes, pets that we have that are just our visitors and friends that come and visit our house. Yeah, so... Yeah, <laughs> And then number four on our list is loving family. I know that I don't think most of us take advantage of this or take granted for this, but I feel like it's just been something that I need to be more aware of because it takes a lot of energy to show up every day. And my family especially has worked hard and done that every day and not just stayed out. And I really, really appreciate that. I really appreciate it too. And I am very grateful for the fact that we actually enjoy each other's company. And that's not something that just happens, right? We just, we work, just like you said, we work hard. What are you talking about? We were all born friends. (laughs) (laughs) We all have, we're born with a voice to speak our mind for sure. And in doing that, we've had to figure out how can we do that and still have our minds and our opinions and our thoughts and our differences and all still live together in harmony. Yeah. In a small space (laughs) with lots of pets. (laughs) <laughs> in harmony mm-hmm. oh yeah the thankful layers keep rising <laughs> well it's a lot to be thankful for because those are things that 
you know, I, I like your list because they are the your your first four are things that we don't always think about and yeah. usually things that we treat the worst. You know, we usually treat ourselves poorly. We don't always feed ourselves the best food. We of don't course. always take care of pets the way we should. And sometimes we don't always take care of our family and speak to them the way we should. Yeah. And I think that it's important to remind ourselves about that as often as we can. So number five on our list, or on my list, (laughs) experiences I've had. So I have had a lot of amazing experiences throughout the decade I have lived. Uh And I think it's just topping on top of each other and every day I get something else that is so memorable and it's not something I can hold but something I can see and I really enjoy that and one of the ones that uh, really stood out and if you've listened to any other podcasts that I've been in I talk a lot about Costa Rica and um, that was really a life-changing experience for me and I had that when I just turned three or four? I don't I remember. Three. three. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I just, it was so life changing about what I was doing. And it was like the first experience. And I remember just being on the airplane, going to Costa Rica, and just feeling overwhelmed with joy. And mm-hmm. I was so thankful. And I was just really happy. And I love that experience and that memory that I will keep in my mind another amazing experience was traveling i remember traveling and it's been so fun to hit all the lower 48 states and learn about every state in that area and every campground in that area and make new friends along the way so i really enjoyed that and this month we've been or these three months we're gonna be volunteering in the keys so we're in the keys right now volunteering and it's been a really fun experience with roving interpretation which means talking to the citizens it's been fun cleaning and just learning about the campground that we very much enjoy so i am excited about that and very thankful that's awesome (laughs) i'm gonna get booted off the (laughs) podcast here pretty soon (laughs) i think you're gonna be uh at mommy's new partner (laughs) you speak better than i do you sound very well traveled my dear (laughs) (laughs) we have had some pretty incredible experiences for sure and it is so awesome that you have been able to soak them in and take it in the moment and really appreciate what you've got from it and then carry those experiences with you and i've said this before like i was very hesitant to do the costa rica trip because i like to squeeze my dollars as tight as I can for as long as I can get the most out of (laughs) them and so I wasn't sure at three years old if you would really appreciate or remember the trip and it seems like that was when your adventuring really kind of began yes it did very much affect me so yeah it's been really fun and um one more thing before we choose uh move on from the Costa Rica thing is number six, ever-changing backyard. I am (laughs) so thankful for that. And I think it kind of goes with the experiences I've had. Um, But I think that it's just so impactful because I know that there are people who live every day planned out. You know what tomorrow's going to be, the next day, the next day. You've got the whole year planned out, and you're not open to experiences, which is what I try to do as much as I can. So it's been really nice to have an ever-changing backyard. And that doesn't just mean living in a camper and moving all the time. When we were in our cocoa house um, in Venice, Florida, we... I remember just every day our backyard would change. There would be ducks. There would be a new plant that Daddy has planted. There would be um, a nest, a bird's nest. Something something had changed every single morning. And that was really helpful for me to learn how to let go and make a new start. And I think that that... um, Ever changing backyard helped with that, so I'm, uh, I'm very so thankful glad. For that. <laughs> That's awesome because w- I've thought about changing our uh, our diet and just cutting sugar out for a little while. 
And I thought that'd be a nice, ever changing course of act. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Food's a different day. story. Yeah, she's uh-huh. grateful for all that food, remember? That's yes. right. That's right. <laughs> now, I love, even with that ever changing backyard, you know, that's something that is. That's something that everybody can create. Yeah, like you said, regardless of whether or not you're yeah. moving, I remember lots of days of you two, of, of you kids being outside in what we called the Hakahuka home and yeah. building <laughs> a big fort out of pallet boards and um, building tree forts. We had a big forsythia bush in Nashville that they would create as their big, uh, I don't know, was it your playhouse or something there? Something like that. <laughs> um, but the amount of things that they created and that we've created as a family with landscaping and gardening and creating forts and cool places to hang out. Yeah. Um, you're right. The backyard is always changing due to the seasons, due to our creativity, um, due to what, you know, what we want to do as we're creating and enjoying being there. Yes. Number seven is feet and this is another body part that you might not really think about as much as um it's important to you because you don't think about walking though if you couldn't walk you wouldn't be able to do anything technically unless you had like a car or a, i don't know something like that <laughs> wheelchair but a wheelchair yeah but i think that we take for granted our feet um mostly because they are just there. <laughs> you don't really do anything with them like you do with your hands, but you're a little bit more conscious about. With your feet, you need to take a lot more care of them because they are taking you everywhere, and they are doing everything you couldn't do with your hands or your face. <laughs> so it's really important to take care of your feet and all your body so that you can take care of yourself and be healthier and stronger in the long run. So I think that I had to put feet down on there because I felt like something that we usually take for granted that is so impactful and amazing that I wanted to share it. And I, and I know that oftentimes those things that are brought to our awareness are because things come personal to us as well. And when uh, you were two and you broke your leg and were in a full leg cast. Yeah, that was miserable. <laughs> yeah, and that happened um, on her growth plate. And so she has had, whenever her body has grown, she's had more pains in her legs. And so recognizing that, Yeah, it's made you more aware of how hard you are on your feet and whether you're stomping on concrete or things like that. Oh, right. It's made her aware. It's made her aware. Now, whether or not she stops. As as much as I can be aware. I mean, like, I'm still a kid. Yeah, yeah. experiences (laughs) is higher on the list than feet. Yes, experiences is higher than feet. See, like, even in, like, I I came up with experiences before feet, so, you know. (laughs) That's like a last it's, minute thought. It is, good, it is <laughs> good to have feet on the list for sure. <laughs> yes. All right. What's mm, number eight? Number eight is people I've met along the way. And I think that this is really important, mostly about just like everyone I've seen. I've met a lot of people, and I feel like every person whether we see them again or it's just like a one-time high. It's just been so fun to have friends where I go. And I feel like that's something that I take for granted I and I don't think much about because there's people who live in neighborhoods that don't have many kids around. And I experienced that a little bit in Cocoa Lane where our, all of our neighbors were older. Um, So I didn't have many kids except for a little boy named River, which was like three or two at the time. So it's been really impactful that I have the experiences and the people I've met along the way that have impacted me and I remember them even now. So I think that that's really neat and amazing. And I feel like we kind of take for granted the people that we meet even it's just so nice to know that I have friends outside and I have something to do so that's why one of the reasons why I like in traveling 
um, is just all the friends and all the people that I will meet and all the experiences that I will have. So that kind of like folds into experiences too. So, yeah. Yeah. Where do you go to school? Everywhere. Who is your teacher? Everyone. On that note, I just want to say that like the last few days I've had so much fun with adults too because I kind of have fun with adults like Mariah was a friend of ours here at the campground and she called me over to make cookies and cupcakes and it was I'm kind of into baking so it was really nice to just grill her on the all of the things and yeah so it's been just all the experiences I've had and it's just so cool. It, that's been so cool, yeah, with all of the people that you have met. You've yeah. learned a ton. And so, yeah, we've talked about that and those experiences that everyone's our teacher. And even if it's been a negative interaction, we've learned we've something. We've learned something. That's right. <laughs> we've learned something <laughs> valuable about it. And, and that's helped us for other relationships moving forward, right? Yes. And lucky number nine, what I am right now, in five days I won't be, though. <laughs> <laughs> Memories. I think that memories is something that we also sort of take for granted because of just how much we don't really think about those. But if I didn't have my memories, then I wouldn't be able to remember how to brush my teeth or get up out of bed. And I know that there are some people who can't, don't remember things, and I just I feel some sympathy for them because I know how important memories are to me and that's how I still remember Costa Rica my favorite place in the entire world so yeah it's like poor daddy who can't remember the grocery list when he goes to the grocery (laughs) (laughs) but I'm so glad or his wallet (laughs) (laughs) or his wallet yes calling daddy out (laughs) hardcore but I'm so glad that we take the time to rehash what those memories are um, we did this yeah. the other day. We were playing. Uh, we were outside, and we decided to throw the basketball around. And we've done that before, where we'll throw the basketball around in a circle, and you throw it in a circle to each other, and then everybody takes a step back, and then you do it again, and you uh, can you just do it and, and keep stepping back. So just a, an easy game for playing mess- catch. And whoever messes up has to. We all start, start yeah. back in again. But. We played it a different way this time, and we did it where whoever passed the ball to someone had to say one of their favorite memories about traveling or just in general. And that was really fun to hear some of the memories that I wasn't alive for. So <laughs> it's <laughs> cool to walk down memory lane. Yeah. Sometimes we don't just take more the like, time. More like bounce down memory lane. <laughs> bounce down, <laughs> you're right. And it's cool to take the time to do that and to reflect on those good memories. So often we kind of have a negativity bias and we just remember those things that were bad and those are the things that you know maybe we learned a bit valuable lesson from but sometimes it's a painful memory that we're holding on to more than the good yeah and so it's been really fun for us to continue to bring up and relive and talk about all of the good experiences we have had that have gotten us to here yeah and we never ran out no nope. nope, we did not <laughs> we could have played that game all night long Yeah, except the mosquitoes got us. But for number 10 on our list is opportunities to change and keep growing. I think this is really uh, something that I don't know why it was my last one because I feel like it's something that I always think about. But it's just so amazing to me what I can grow from and learn from in the experiences I've had at the campgrounds and my house, everywhere that I've gone, it's just so amazing to know that I'm learning and I'm growing everywhere that I'm going. And now that I'm turning 10, I feel like everything's just like rushing back to me and I remember everything. And it's kind of just amazing. It's kind of like memories and opportunities to change and keep growing in one. (laughs) Cause I just changing and growing I feel like that's something that we take for granted because there are some times where I've been pretty throwing temper tantrums and that sort of stuff. Um, But I just am so thankful that there is a chance for me to change and keep growing and keep learning and that my family has given me that chance. So, yeah. Well, that's beautiful, Jules. And I think it is an important lesson for all of us to realize that you know the things that we've done and who we've been is how we got to here 
And the way we want to get to to there is, you know, one step at a time. It's looking for those those opportunities in every day to keep growing, changing, and exploring new facets of who you are. Totally. I absolutely love that. Thank you so much for sharing your 10 things you are grateful for. I'm going to lay these out on our little blog that goes along with this so that you see a repeat of what Juliet has said as her top 10 that she is grateful for as she's embarking on her 10th birthday. And speaking of memories, Miss Juliet, I haven't read this to you, but I wanted to read to you. This is something that popped up in my feed from an old blog, and I wanted to reshare it. It says, okay, <laughs> it says, Mommy, I'm going to grow up. These words were stated by my two-year-old as I once again did the bedtime battle with her. This little girl, so full of love and spunk, stopped me in my tracks. Now, to give full disclosure, there is an added level of cuteness when you learn that she actually intended, what she actually intended to say is, Mommy, I'm going to throw up, because she knows that when her older sisters have said that, I stop everything and go with them to the bathroom. <laughs> Without the concept of how incredibly unfun it really is to throw up, <laughs> she figured this ploy would at least delay bedtime a bit. That being said, what I heard, and I truly heard it, Mommy, I'm going to grow up. And bam, just like that, my rushing to just get that last kid in bed so I can finally have some grown-up time came to a halt. She's right. Whether she meant to or not, she brought it to my attention again that she's not so little anymore. My little baby, my last precious child, is going to grow up. She will assert her independence more and more over the years, pulling further away from me as she becomes her own incredible self. So, sweet Jules, you will grow up. And yes, you got some extra cuddles out of me that night. But remember this. Never, ever forget this. You are and always will be my baby girl. And I vow to remind myself of this daily. Your beautiful sensitivity and compassion for life and everything in it. Your silly faces. Your oh-so-loving hugs and kisses. And your incredible smile and laughter. I promise to hold this close to me. To remember it in the trying times. To cherish your love and your words on this night. Holding a two-year-old while I sing your lullaby song just one more little bit of time. And do not one, but two Snug as a bug in a rugs. You want me to sing our song? Sure. Go to sleep, sweet Juliet. Go to sleep and sleep all night. Go to sleep, sweet Juliet. I'll wake you in the morning light. I love you, my precious girl. Happy 10th birthday. <laughs> you are going to grow up, and I am so glad we get to share this life with you and continue to make memories together. We challenge you to, anybody who's listened to this podcast, to have this sort of a conversation with your kids. Get to know what they're grateful for right now. Ask them what's, what's important to them in their lives right now. It's amazing, and it gives a great opportunity to fall in love with your child all over again. As we celebrate how the, the uniqueness, uniqueness in each of us strengthens all of us. Namaste. Namaste. One, two, three. Up with the rising sun, already on the run. Mama says, Namaste. Life is a tangled mess, then you don't have to stress. Mama says, Mama stay. Cause today, I will stand up and be all the change that I want to see in this world. Boys and girls, you gotta stand up to be free. Mama stay. Come on.